welcome and welcome to worship. Now we thought it would be really lovely if you're at home to be able to share a worship with us in school. So before we can do that, we need to invite God into our worship. Are you ready? And you can say the special words at home. Jesus is the light of the world. Now this week, um, we've been thinking in our worships in school about the Christian value of hope. And we shared the story of Noah's Ark. We've got the lovely Lydia and Samantha who are going to share their stories in their own words about the story of Noah's Ark. Um, Samantha is very kindly reading Cameron's version of the story and Lydia is reading her own. I'll pass it over to the girls. God had thought he had made a perfect world, but he desperately needed to change it as his people became bitter and angry. He said to one of the few people that he knew he could trust, Noah. God told Noah that he had to build an ark, 30 cu 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high, and have a pair of each animal in the world. Noah knew that he could trust God. God knew he could trust Noah too. Noah thought this was... This would be hard and a tiring task, but he didn't question God. So the days went by, Noah had found that he had built the ark. Now was to the hardest part. He had to find two of every kind of animal in the world. This, would t this took a while. Slowly but surely, he collected two of every animal. Noah had three sons and a wife. These were the people that were able to come on the ark alongside Noah and the animals. Noah, his family, and the animals lived on the boat for seven days before the first raindrops fell. Then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Soon, the earth was covered in water. After it stopped raining, the water continued to rise for 150 days. The ark landed in the mountain range of Arat during the seventh month of the flood. Then, God sent, out, sent a great wind and the water began to evaporate. Finally, Noah sent the dove out of the ark's window. It never returned, so that meant it had found somewhere to nest on dry land. Suddenly, a beautiful rainbow filled the sky. This was God's promise that he would never flood the earth again. Romans in the Bible says, May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. That means that by having God in our lives, it strengthens our hope. We asked some of the adults in our school what they thought hope was. Now we can have a listen to what they thought. When I was a little girl, I always hoped for things for myself. So at birthdays and Christmas, I'd hope for the presents I'd get. So I'd hope I'd get a pony for Christmas. But now I'm a little bit older, I hope for things for other people. So I hope they're safe and they're happy, or I write, I hope you're well on a text. That's what hope is for me. I think hope is a feeling of optimism. It's a feeling of maybe, it's a positive feeling. It makes you feel that whatever you want, it's worth waiting for. I hope that 2020 can get back to some kind of normality. So we're used to it and remember how it used to be. And I hope that everyone I know has coped as well as they can be in this weird time. Hope is being able to look forward with a positive attitude. It means the future is worth waiting for, even if the present is difficult to bear. It makes hard times easier and gives you something to look forward to. I hope that we can all continue to stay positive in these hard times and pull together to keep moving forward as a team, just like the youth. Now it's your turn. What we thought would be absolutely amazing is if you could join in with our worship. So if you have any ideas about what you think hope is, or if you would like to send us a rainbow of hope, or write the story in your own version of Noah's Ark, then we would love to see them. Please can you send it to the inquiries email address and they will all get to me so I get to see your lovely learning. Keep your eyes peeled on the website for an update. Thank you. 